We're looking at errors in the Quran relative to Alexander the Great. In Surah 18, 83 to 100, we find the story of Dhu Du Al Karanain, or that, how you pronounce it, who is known as the Greek conqueror, Alexander the Great. According to the Surah, his power was given to him by Allah, which some Muslims contend is an assertion that he had the same prominence as a prophet. But of even more importance to our discussion is the contention, according to this Surah, that he was credited with building an enormous wall of iron and brass between two mountains, which was tall enough and wide enough to keep an entire army out. There's no historical reference for a verification of this at all. It's, it is simple to test these claims because Alexander lived in the full light of history. A number of books, volumes have been written about him. Arian, Quintus, and Curtius, and other historians of repute have written the history of Alexander's exploits. From their writings we know that Aristotle, Aristotle was his tutor. Yet these historians equivocally make him out as a heathen general whose debauchery and drunkenness contributed to his untimely death at the early age of 33. They show that he was an idolater and actually claimed to be the son of the Egyptian god Amon. How, therefore, could he be considered to have the same prominence as a prophet? Or even, as Ayah 84 clearly asserts, that Allah was the agent for his power. <coughs> Yet, what is even more troubling, there is no historical evidence anywhere that he built the wall of iron and brass between two mountains, a feat which indeed would have proven him to be one of the greatest builders or engineers in the history of mankind. I don't know if we can still do that. When we find the Quran so inaccurate in regard to Alexander, whose history is well known, we hesitate to accept as valuable or even as reliable the statements of the Quran about other matters of past history. Now we have creation. Surah 86, 5-7 tells us that man is created for a gushing fluid that issues from between the loins and the ribs. Therefore, in this surah we find that the semen which creates a child originates from the back or kidney of the male and not the testicles. Pharaoh's cross. Surah 7.124 we find Pharaoh admonishing his sorcerers because they believe in the superiority of Moses' power over theirs. Pharaoh threatens them with cutting off their hands and feet on opposite sides and then says they will all die on the cross. But there were no crosses in those days whose eviction was first practiced by the Phoenicians and the Carthaginians, Carthaginians, yeah, and then borrowed extensively by the Romans close to the time of Christ, 1,700 years after Pharaoh. Now we have other scientific problems. Surah 1666 mentions that cow's milk comes from between the excrement and the blood of the cow's abdomen. What does this mean? Surah 1669, we are told that honey, which gives healing, comes out of the bee's abdomen. Again, what does it mean that honey comes out of a bee's abdomen? Surah 638 says that all animals and flying beings form communities like humans. I would like to ask whether this includes spiders, where in some species the female eats the male after mating has taken place. Is that a community like ours? Surah 25, 45 to 46 maintains that it is the sun which moves to create shadows. Yet I've always been taught that it was the rotation of the earth which caused shadows to move while the sun remained quite still, i.e. thus the importance of sundials in earlier days. <clears throat> Surah 17.1 says, Muhammad went to the farthest mosque during his journey by night, the Miraj, which Muslims explained was the Dome of the Rock Mosque in Jerusalem. But there was no mosque in Jerusalem during the life of Muhammad, and the Dome of the Rock was not built until 690 CE by the Amir Abdi al-Malik, a full 50 years after Muhammad's death. There was not even a temple in existence at that time. The Temple of Jerusalem had been destroyed by Titus 570 years before the vision, this vision. So what was this mosque that Muhammad supposedly saw? Absurdities. <coughs> there are other errors which the statements or stories which simply make no sense at all. 
and put into question the integrity of the writers or writers of the Quran. Writer or writers of the Quran. Man's greatness. Surah 459 states, Greater surely than the creation of man is the creation of the heavens and the earth. But most men know it not. This implies that greatness is only measured by size, that the mere vastness of the physical universe makes it greater than man, an argument which would make a football of immensity greater value than the largest diamond. Our scripture tells us that man's greatness lies not in this, his size, but in his relationship with God, that he is made in God's image, a claim which no other animate or inanimate objects, object can make. Not only that, I would add to this, man is the most complex thing in the universe, despite the size of the surrounding universe, stars, and so on. The universe doesn't have any intelligence like man. Anyway, seven earths. Surah 65, 4, 12 reads, It is good, God, who hath created seven heavens and as many earths. We would love to know where the other six earths are. If these refer to the planets in our solar system, then they are short by two, and now possibly three. Gems and shooting stars. Meteors and even stars are said to be missiles fired at eavesdropping Satans and jinn who seek to listen to the reading of the Quran in heaven and then pass on what they hear to men in Suraz. There are only Suraz that would support that. How are we to understand these Suraz? Can we believe indeed that Allah throws meteors, which are made up of carbon dioxide and iron nickel, at non-material devils who see, steal a hearing at the heavenly counts? How do you explain the fact that many of Earth's meteors come in showers which consequently travel in parallel paths? Are we to thus understand that these parallel paths imply that the devils are all lined up in rows at the same moment? Solomon's power over nature, birds and ants. King Solomon was taught the speech of birds, Surah 27.16, and the speech of ants, Surah 27.18-19. In his battles, he used birds extensively to drop clay bricks on Abra's, Abra's army, Surah 105, 3-4, and marched them into military parades, and he also used them to bring him messages of powerful queens. Note, according to the historical record, <clears throat> Abra's army was not defeated by bricks dropped on their head. Rather, they withdrew their attack on Mecca after smallpox broke out among the troops. Jinn. The jinn were forced to work for Solomon, making him whatever he pleased, such as palaces, statues, <coughs> large dishes, and brass fountains. <coughs> A malignant jinn was even commissioned to bring the Queen of Sheba's throne in the twinkling of an eye. Now we have wind. Surah, Surah 3.11 2181 say the wind was subject to Solomon traveling a month's journey both in the morning and the evening through the wisdom of its timing is somehow though the wisdom of its timing is somehow lost in translation D ants talk the ants upon seeing Solomon as an army arriving in their valley and by implication recognizing who he was talk among themselves to flee underground so as not to be crushed. Youth and dog sleep 309 years. Surah 18, 9 to 25 tells the story of some youths, the exact number is debated, and a dog who sleep for 309 years with their eyes open and their ears closed. Now, Yusuf Ali's attempts to delineate the exact time period of this story in footnote no, number 2365, and then concludes that it is merely a parable. The object of this story is to show Allah's power to keep those who trust in him, including the dog, without food or water for as long as he likes. And people become apes. In Surahs 265 to 66 and 7, 163, 167, Allah turns certain fishing people who break the Jewish Sabbath into apes for their disobedience. Had Darwin read the Quran, his theory on evolution may have paralleled Planet of the Apes. 
rather the, than the other way around. Sodom and Gomorrah turned upside down. Sodom and Gomorrah turned upside down. In Surahs 1181 to 83, 1574, the two cities of Sodom and Gomorrah are turned upside down and rained upon with clay-like brimstone upon whose surface were marked the destiny of the wicked people who lived there. Jacob's smell and sight. In Surah 12, 93 to 96, Joseph sends his coat to his father as proof of his existence. But as the caravan leaves Egypt, Jacob, who is in Canaan, smells Joseph, who is hundreds of miles away. Then the coat, when it arrives, is placed over the face of his father, Jacob, and suddenly he receives his sight. <clears throat> now, we know why Andrew Lloyd Webber added the word amazing to the title of his musical Joseph's Amazing Technical Color Dreamcoat. <clears throat> night, day, sun, moon are subject to man. In Surah 16, 12 to 15, the day and night, as well as the sun and moon, are surprisingly all made subject to man. That would imply that we had control over the rotation of our planet, as well as the entire movement of our solar system. Yusuf Ali's explanation of this odd pronouncement in note number 2031 is rather interesting. Grammatical errors. Muslims believe that since the Quran is the word of God, it is without error in all areas. We have already dealt with the questions concerning the style and literary qualities of the Quran earlier and found it to be quite defective in these areas. Yet even more troubling are the grammatical mistakes which exist within its text. Can we expect an omnipotent and omniscient God to allow such deficiencies to creep into a supposedly perfect and eternal revelation? Consider the following. Surah 2.177, the word Sabirin should be Sabirun because of its position in the sentence. Since it is a human plural, it should remain in the masculine plural form. Surah 7.160, the phrase we divided them into 12 tribes is written in the feminine plural. Due to the fact that it refers to a number of people, it should be written in the masculine plural form as all human plurals are automatically male in Arabic. Surah 4, 162, the phrase, and especially those who establish regular prayer, is written as this here in the Arabic, which I won't try to pronounce, which again is in the feminine plural form instead of the masculine plural. It is important to note that the two following phrases those who practice regular charity and those who believe in Allah are bo both correctly written in the masculine and human plural form. Surah 569, titled al Sibiyun, referring to the Sabians, should be written al Sibayin. Surah 6310, the phrase I shall be is written akun, which is in the third person. Yet, since this refer word refers to the future, and is in the first person, it should be written akunu. In Surah 359, the words kun fiknu should be written, as is written there, kun fakana. There are other grammatical errors which exist in the Quran as well, such as in these surahs and the duals, which replace the plurals in Surah 55. If we are still in doubt as to whether the Quran is subject to error, it might be helpful to end this section by quoting a Muslim scholar who himself come out comments on this very problem concerning grammatical mistakes in the Quran. The Quran contains sentences which are incomplete and not fully intelligible without the aid of commentaries, foreign words unfamiliar with Arabic words, and words used with other than the normal meaning, adjectives and verbs inflected without observance of the concords of gender and number, illogically and ungrammatically applied pronouns, which sometimes have no referent, the predicates, which in rhyme passages are often remote from the subjects, to sum up more than 100 Quranic aberrations and the normal rules and structure of Arabic have been noted. <clears throat>